Let me quickly give you now a list of the skills that changed my life forever. Right, I knew how to milk cows, but didn't pay well. Here's the first skill I learned that changed my life. Getting a customer. Making a sale. If you share a unique product, talk about its merits, persuade someone that it's the best, they agree to buy, that's the simple art of sales. So we're not talking like high-powered spacecraft technical skills here. It's simply sharing something you've discovered with someone else and doing it well enough to where they agree they would like to participate. Now here's what happened when I learned sales. It multiplied my income by five. Now it didn't take that much because I wasn't doing that well in farm country, but it did multiply my income by five. Sales, getting customers, laying that incredible foundation for an entrepreneurial career. So now I've got two skills, milking cows and making sales. Here's the next one I learned that changed me forever. And that's recruiting, introducing the business opportunity to new people, learning how to give a good invitation, learning how to give two kinds of presentation, formal and informal. And the third part of recruiting, of course, is following up. Once you start a new life, now you gotta take care of it, like a new mother would take care of her baby. You don't start a new life and abandon it. You start a new life and nourish it like a mother and protect it like a father. You gotta be mo both mother and father to a new person. Nourishment, ideas like a mother. Protection, help defend your new life against the encroachment of outside voices that would try to talk them out of it. So you gotta be mother and father in this art of recruiting. We call it being a sponsor. And being a sponsor is like being a bridge, helping somebody from darkness to light, from skeptic to faith, from not knowing to knowing, from no confidence in themselves to starting to gain confidence. You're the bridge that helps people from the shadows to the sunlight. It's one of the most exciting positions to occupy in all of network marketing industry, is the bridge, helping people crossing the bridge, out from discouragement into recognition. Being this bridge, that's what the recruiting magic is all about. You've got the answers. They've been looking for the answers. You've got the answers and you help them cross this bridge. You see something in them before they can see it in themselves. You assure them that it's possible to be more than they are. Therefore, they can earn more than they've got, have more than they possess. This is one of the great arts in the world. And here's what's exciting about this art. It pays big money. Because now you operate a unique philosophy taught first in the Bible. John Kennedy taught it in his inaugural speech. Zig Ziglar's got one of the best ways to put it. And that's the secret to wealth. The secret to wealth and fortune. First taught in the Bible. Because the question was asked, how can we achieve greatness? Great wealth, great power, great influence, great recognition, great self-esteem. How can we achieve greatness? The master teacher was asked. And here was his formula for achieving personal greatness. He said, find a way to serve the many. For service to many leads to greatness. For those that are interested. Some people aren't interested, but for those that are, service to many leads to greatness. Someone says, well, best I can do is just take care of myself, which is okay, but it doesn't lead to greatness. Someone says, I got enough bills of my own, I can't worry about someone else's bills. That's okay, but it doesn't lead to greatness. Greatness is helping people pay their bills. You forget about yours. Because if you help enough people pay theirs, yours disappear. Help people with problems, your problems disappear. The key to greatness, the master teacher taught, is finding a way. Now, a lot of people would like to serve many people, but they don't have a way. And what's exciting about you and your business is you've now got the way. Whether you use it or not, it's up to you. Whether you cash it in or not is up to you. Whether you make a fortune or just a little, that's all up to you. Each person's ambition. It's called the same marketing, the same product. These products are the same for everybody here. The marketing system is the same. The difference is each person's philosophy and each person's individual ambition. But whatever your ambitions are, now you've got the ways and means. And here's what you've got the ways and means to do. Serve as many people as you would like. Now, here's what's exciting about recruiting. 
with what you're involved in here, you can directly and indirectly affect the lives of dozens of people. Some of you are going to directly and indirectly affect the lives of hundreds of people. And some of you, if you wish, can directly and indirectly affect the lives of thousands of people. And the pay is accordingly. If you affect a few, you earn that pay. If you affect the many, you earn that pay. But the secret is found in the Bible. Service to many leads to greatness. Now, John Kennedy said it in his inaugural speech. Here's what he said. Don't ask. Don't we wish that was the current political philosophy? Where is John Kennedy and his philosophy? John Kennedy said, don't ask. That's important if you understand philosophy. He said, don't ask what the people can do for you. Don't ask what the country can do for you. Don't ask what the government can do for you. That's not how you get rich. That's not how you have high self-esteem. That's not how you get trophies to put on the mantle above the fireplace, asking what the people can do for you. Don't ask, he said, what the people can do for you. But ask, what could I do for my country? And the country means the people. What could I do for the people? I want trophies. I want recognition. I want high self-esteem. I would even like, like a chance to make a fortune. John Kennedy says it's easy. Don't ask what the people can do for you, but ask, what could I do for the people? Could I directly and indirectly serve many in my country? Now, Zig probably said it best. Zig says money isn't everything, but it ranks right up there with oxygen. <laughs> Zig, you're right. Zig says, my dentist told me, Zig, only floss the teeth you want to keep. You know, forget the rest. But here, Zig is famous for this now. This is one of Zig's philosophies, and it goes right along with the other two, the Bible and John Kennedy. Here's what Zig says. If you help enough people get what they want, you can have everything you want. If you help enough people get what they want, you can have everything you want. Now, wanting everything you want, we call that self-interest. But it's, it, it's okay to have self-interest if you do it in a positive way. By helping enough people get what they want, you can have everything you want. Now, you can accomplish all that by learning this next skill called recruiting. And I learned it, and it made me fortunes. So now I've got three skills, milking cows, making sales, and recruiting. Here's the next skill I learned that paid big money, organizing. Once you got a few, get them to work together, see, and that's magic. Getting people to work together is magic. Now, yes, it's challenging, like having some, you know, several in members of your family getting them to work together is challenging, but it's magic. Getting husband and wife to work together is challenging, but it's magic when it happens. But everything magic is challenging. Just got to jot that down. Everything magic is challenging. But once you figure out the challenge and go for it, then the magic occurs. Let me tell you how magic, how magical people working together is. Let me quote the Bible again. It says, if two or three agree on a common purpose, nothing is impossible. Just try that on for your mental size. If two or three agree on a common purpose, nothing's impossible. Everybody's looking for a challenge. Here's what I teach, especially the kids. Here's the best challenge in the world. Let's go do it. Not you go do it. Let's go do it. If two or three of us decide on a common purpose to do it, nothing's impossible. Incredible. Working together, organizing. Now, when everybody's an independent, now it's a little more challenging. Like having kids, they've each got their own opinions. They've each got their own uh, ambitions and desires. It, it's, it's challenging. You've got a variety. But that's what makes life the variety. And it is in your business, it is challenging, getting people to work together. It's like herding cats. You know, sheep are easy, sheep are easy, but you got to try cats, herding cats. <laughs> but if you can possibly get it done, the power is so immense when you get people to work together. Here's one of the powers of working together, shared testimonials. If I've got somebody new and you're there and I'm there, I give them my testimonial, you give your testimonial. Maybe what tips the scales in getting me a new person is not my testimonial, but my partner's testimonial. Somebody I'm working with, their testimonial got them. Shared testimonials are so powerful. That's why getting working together is okay, is it, powerful. Now, working by yourself is okay. All this stuff is okay. 
Everybody needs to know, though, where are the advantages? And these are some of the advantages. I learned to organize, paid big money. Here's what I next learned to do. Promote. Promotion now pays staggering money. Now, the company comes up with what we call major promotions. Here's what you've got to come up with. The smaller promotions. The company comes up with major recognition. You've got to come up with small recognition for your people around you. The top five, the company's got top five. You've got your own top five in maybe two or three categories. Top five, top five, top five. And those little recognitions to reach certain levels in the company, you have to take major steps. But for you, recognition, let them take small steps. Here's one of the secrets of your kind of business. Rewarding people for small steps of progress. Rewarding people. Sometimes it's just recognition, handshake, pat on the
in the back, Mary, you're doing a fabulous job. And you figure out what those recognitions are. Small steps of progress. Guess what promotion pays if you learn it well? Big money. Getting people to do something they wouldn't ordinarily do by themselves. People will do some unique things by themselves, but if you can figure out a way to say, Mary, if you do this and this, she says, well, I'll go for it. Now, she, she wouldn't have thought of that on her own. Here's what works magic. It's better than money. Money's a bit unimportant. Here's what's important. Ingenuity. The best place to wake up your ingenuity is what you're doing right now. Representing a unique product and getting customers, recruiting distributors and promoting and all this stuff. Ingenuity. Figuring out a way. If it doesn't work this way, we'll work another way. I used my ingenuity made a fortune. I learned promotion and it paid big money. Here's next I learned. Communication. How to conduct a meeting. I learned identification, logic and reason, attack and confess, solution, simple deals on communication. Wasn't easy for me at first. I stood up to give my first presentation, my mind sat back down, <laughs> right? Y'all been through that? Opened my mouth, nothing came out for a while. But here's what I did. I did it again. Just jot that phrase down. I did it again. That's the secret to how I got here. 35, 40 years later, it's how I got here. I did it once, it was uncomfortable. That first presentation was so lousy, if I hadn't have been doing it, I'd have gone home. <laughs> it was not that good. But here's the secret to how I got here. I did it again, and then I did it again, and then I did it again, and I did it again. I remember when I first decided to be a little more animated, right? And walk out away from the podium, right? Get out from just behind the podium. So I got out there, and then I thought, how do you get back? <laughs> Whoa, I'm stranded out here. Remember those times, doing something for the first time? So learn communication. How to a I know you told your friend you're not okay. And tell me what's wrong and why you never said you felt that way. And guess you're trying to stay strong and fake a smile until I look away. But I've known you too long, it hurts to watch your blue eyes fade to gray. As you fade away, as you fade away, yeah, I'm about to fade away. Cause every time I wake up, I feel like it's Monday. Something's going wrong with all the chemicals up in my brain. All of a sudden, I don't look at anything the same way. Got a build up of my thoughts sitting in an ashtray. I'm sorry that I'm so inconvenient, okay? Just let me be me and I'll stay out of your way I can see the way you look at me, I'm such a disgrace I never really asked to be brought into this place You wanna love me? Well then baby have a taste All the highs and the lows, no you'll never be the same I don't really wanna hurt you but I can't control the pain If you're sticking by my side, maybe we could be okay Okay, okay, maybe you could be the change I need today, I promise that I've never felt this way I really hope that you
you try to stay strong and fake a smile until I look away But I've known you too long, it hurts to watch your blue eyes fade to grey Affect other people with words. That's the greatest art in the world to learn. How to affect other people with words. Key phrase, don't be lazy in language. If you learn to use the gift of your own language wisely, it can make you a fortune and build an incredible life. Here's three other things I learned. One is to train. Training people how the business works. And then I've used another word called teach. Train and teach. And only to say this, training people how the business works, teaching is how life works. Because here's what all of us need for the 21st century, business skills and life skills. The life skills are leadership skills. The life skills are learning how to set goals. Now here's the ultimate skill to learn that can transform your life and the life of whoever will listen. The ability to inspire. Inspire means help people to look up a little higher than where they are and wish they could get there and inspire them that it's possible. Here's how we inspire, by our own testimony. If I can do it, you can do it. Here's how else we inspire, by others' testimonial. If they can do it, Mary, you can do it. Getting people to see themselves better than they are. Getting people to see themselves richer than they are. Getting people to see themselves more capable next year than they are this year. Getting to see themselves in the future. To help both your kids and your people, here's what you must learn to do. Number one, help people to see themselves as they are. If people have made mistakes, they got to know it. You can't go on making mistakes and hope to achieve. Mistakes have to be corrected. And you've got to do it with your children, help them to see themselves as they are. If they've messed up, here's what you've got to say. You've messed up. But here's what's important as a parent. Don't leave them in the mess. Some parents, you know, tell their kids they've messed up and then they leave them in the mess. They don't paint a better picture. Here's what you could become with just a couple of more changes. Rather than this, here's what you could be. So we must help our children see themselves as they are, but here's the greatest gift, to help our children see themselves better than they are. To transport.
them not only past to see their mistakes, but transport them to the future to see their opportunity. To see the person they can become. My mentor had that greatest gift to help me to see myself better than I was. At first it was difficult to see, then I started to believe, and that's how I got here today. He said, one of these days, Mr. Owen, you'll walk into a room full of people, and you will hear some of them say, that's him, that's the famous man. I, I said, well, that could never happen to me. He said, trust me. If you keep working hard on the disciplines like you're doing right now, that'll happen. You'll walk into a room full of people and you'll hear one say, that's him, that's the famous man. He saw it and he tried to get me to see it. And now finally it's happened. I think when I walk in here today, I think I heard someone say, that's him, that's the famous man. <laughs> and if it can happen for me, it can happen for you. Just master these skills to inspire. So what else I, I learned, the skills of building an organization. Learn to work with the people who deserve it, not the people who need it. You must be like life itself, respond to deserve, not to need. It doesn't say if you need, you will have a harvest. It doesn't say if you need a harvest, you'll have a harvest. It's not what it says. It says if you plant, chances are good you'll have a harvest. If you plant, you will reap. Not if you need, you will reap. So we must be like life itself. Respond to the people who deserve it by planting, by taking the first step. Even God himself says, if you move toward me, I'll move toward you. That's the condition. You move toward me, I'll move toward you, says the Almighty. Now he could also say, you don't move, I don't move. You say, well, that's arbitrary. Well, when you're God, you can set it up that way. Now, learn to work with the people who deserve it, not the people who need it. Now, here's what's the next step. Teach people how to deserve your time. Teach people how to deserve your attention. Teach people how to deserve a phone call. Say, Mary, you just take... one step and I take two steps. You take two steps, I take five steps. You don't step, I don't step. But this isn't hard now. You step, I step. You respond, I respond. You try, I try. You make a call, I back you up. Right? Learn to teach people how to deserve your time and your attention. Next, I learn to work by group, 
more than individuals. Here's why. 80% of the people do 20% of the business. So 20% of the people you can work with individual, 80% you have to work with by group. But group is very powerful, less confrontational. Then here's what's important for all of you to learn. You can help a thousand, but you can't carry three on your back. You can help a thousand, but you can't carry three on your back. And I'm sure all of you have already gotten that experience, even though you've been here a short time. Some people will try to get on your back. That's where we got that expression. Get off. We're... That's where we got that. A guy discovered somebody on his back and said, what? I can't carry you. Get. Now, if you're like some I see here, you know, six foot four and you weigh 300 pounds, you might carry one. And if, if you were really big enough, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar or something, you might carry two, but you can't carry three. When babies are born, they were not designed just to be carried. Babies were not born to be carried all their life. Someday you got to try your legs. Someday you got to try your wings. Someday you got to try. Even if you fall down, you got to try because you can't just crawl around all your life. You can't be carried all your life. So as quickly as possible, you can help a thousand, but you can't carry three. Next, don't expect the pear tree to bear apples. I used to try to change everything.
You can hang apples on a pear tree. I'm telling you, it won't help. You can put up a sign. This is an apple tree. Sure enough, come the season, pears. Here's what I learned. You cannot change people, but they can change themselves. You cannot change people, but they can change themselves. Incredible. Capital in your business isn't what matters. Okay, it's not the money that buys you a future. It's your skills that buy you a future. Money and no skills, and I'm telling you, you're still poor. Money and no ambition, where are you? Money and no courage, you're broke. A little bit of money and a whole lot of courage, that's all we need. I'm looking for people when I'm recruiting back in those days, and the money didn't matter. What mattered to me was somebody's willingness, somebody's ingenuity, somebody's willingness to try, right? If they had a dollar to invest, that was plenty for me. A dollar and some ambition, and I can show you how to get rich, and it'll be one of the classic stories of the company. I go to recruit somebody, they say, I don't have any money. See, I've been looking for you for six months. <laughs> Let me show you how to do it without any money. Because here's the rules of capitalism. Jot this down. You can either buy and sell, or if you're in certain circumstances, you can sell and buy. If you've got ambition. Now, if you haven't got ambition, we can't cure that. And money won't cure lack of ambition. But if you've got a dollar and some ambition, I'll show you how to get rich. And even if you don't have a dollar, I'll show you how to get rich because you can sell and buy. Somebody says, as soon as the product arrives, I'll sell it. Then you don't understand. You don't understand the magic of fortune if you say, I have to wait till it gets here to sell it. And you probably don't understand the value of your own story. Once I understood that, I knew I was going to be wealthy. That's why right in the beginning, I started giving big tips. I knew I was going to be wealthy. I say, wow, this guy tips like a rich man. Say, That's right. He tips like a rich man. <laughs> Even in the beginning, I tipped like a rich man because I knew I was going to be 